And now to carry you through with the play-by-play -play for this afternoon's game between Ohio State and Purdue, here's the voice of the Buckeyes, Ken Coleman. Thank you, Bob Connors. And Purdue has won the toss. They will receive to our left to the closed end of the stadium. The 1 p.m. temperature, partly cloudy, 58. The wind out of the south, that is uh, at the back of the Buckeyes, at 15, gusting up to 24 miles an hour. The referee is Richard McVeigh. The umpire, Russ Kemper. The headlinesman is Ed Sheck. The line judge, Gil Marchman. The field judge, Charles McCollum. And the back judge, Bill Quinby. And the Buckeyes get ready to kick off. And when they go out there, Tom Orris will do the booting. To his right, Vogler, Bach, and Hornick. To his left, Blinko, Guess, Bell, Duncan Griffin, Laughlin, and Schwartz. It will be interesting to look at Mark Furman today. As a high schooler in Carmel, Indiana, he's had 47 touchdown passes in the last two years, including five in one game. They picked a quote out of the uh, repertoire of the late Ernie Godfrey this week. Woody Hayes said that at 6'5", Mark Herman will be looking out the upstairs window. And he has amazing poise for a freshman. That is the thing that they talk about with Purdue, and he puts that ball up in the air, and he's got some people who have been able to catch it, like Ray Smith, who has caught 21, and uh, John Skabinski has caught 17, and a lot of them swing passes. They have a superb tight end named Dave Young, who has caught 13. He's from Akron, and they have Reggie Smith, who has caught 20 out of Bartow, Florida. Boris is ready, and we're underway. The kickoff going down into the end zone. It is Jerome King right on the goal line. Starts angling to his left to the 5. Cuts back to the right at the 10. Comes to the 15. Up to the 20. Over the 25 and down at the 28-yard line and slips and slides another yard or two. Making the tackle Tom Blinko along with Mike Guess. And so it goes over at the 28-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for the Boilermakers. The new face we'll see in that uh, down front four will be number 60, Gary Doolin, in in place of Eddie Beam. Uh, Doolin's a sophomore, 6'4", 254-pounder out of Madisonville, Kentucky. Ray Smith is going out wide to the left. They have just Gabinski as a one-man in behind the quarterback, and he takes it, goes over left tackle, and bucks his way out to the 33-yard line for a pickup of five, where Dave Atkins, who is leading the Buckeyes in solo tackles with 33, makes the stop at the 33, a gain of five. It'll be second down and five yards to go. Skabinski has carried 62 times for 231 yards, an average of 3.7, and uh, he had a big day last year. He had 97 yards for Purdue against Ohio. Ohio State. Jeff Logan had his best day last year against Purdue, 175 yards and two touchdowns. Now back goes Herman. He throws on the right side and hits at the 42-yard line, making the catch Reggie Arnold. He goes up to the 45 and just over it. Kelton Dantzler and Lenny Mills are there on the tackle. So the freshman quarterback on his first throw, a quick down and outer, and he hits for 12 yards. First down. I think, Ken, that's the kind of pass you're going to see the Buckeyes uh, let them have. Those short things, the, uh, uh, the short hooks, the short outs. Uh, they'll let them have those just so they don't throw anything long that's going to hurt us. Reggie Arnold comes out wide to the right. They're using um, Mike Brown as a flanker on the right side. And here's Herman starting to roll right, and he's going to be spilled for a loss back at the 44. I think he was trying to get off a pass. He had several people going out, but they were on uh, coverage, tough coverage. And Aaron Brown and Tom Cousinow back in the lineup make the, the stop at the 44-yard line, and it is second down and 11 yards to go for the Boilermakers. Herman following uh, such greats as Len Dawson, Bob DeMoss, Dale Samuels, Bernie Allen, Bob Greasy, and Mike Phipps. This series began in 1919. 27 meetings. Ohio State has won 18, lost 7, tied 2. Herman back to throw. Dumps it out to Skabinski at the 45, over the 50, into the Buckeye territory, onto the Buckeye 43-yard line. Cousinow is there on the tackle. And um, in there also is Lenny Mills. And that is to the 43. The gain is 12. That's enough. Another first down. So Herman is picking his spots and his move from his 28 to the Buckeye 43 in a matter of five plays. Two of them. 12-yard passes. Well, with John Skabinski coming out of the backfield, uh, Ken, what we have is uh, uh, he's their third-leading receiver. And he is the only one behind the quarterback who again goes back, throws down and out on the left side, and it is intercepted by Mike Guess at the 40, up to the 50, down the sideline, 40, 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Mike Guess. 60-yard run by Mike Guess. 
Yes, he picked it off at the 40 down on the far side of the field and races 60 yards for the touchdown. The back of the week, last week, the sophomore who has been sensational this season. Ray Smith, the intended receiver, and he picked his pocket on that one. So Vlada Yonikieski will go in and try for the point after touchdown, and Jimmy Harrell will hold for him. That is the 11th interception on Mark Herman this season. Six to nothing Buckeyes, and now the try for the point after touchdown by number 13. Yonikieski boots it. It's good. Seven nothing Buckeyes. We pause 30 seconds. Back at Ohio Stadium, the Buckeyes leading Purdue 70 to, uh, 7 to nothing as Mike Guess, a 60-yard interception of Mark Herman and took it all the way back. Yana Kievsky converted, and the score is 7 to nothing as lightning strikes quick. Only 12.49 to go in the first period, and the Buckeyes are on the scoreboard. Tom Orris ready to approach the ball to kick off to the Boilermakers again with more play-by-play. -play. Here's Ken. And the offensive unit has yet to be on the field for the Buckeyes, and Herman had moved his team from the 28 over to the Buckeye 43. And then uh, Mike Guest picked it off. So that gives Herman and Jim Young something to think about. Here's the kickoff. And this one goes deep into the end zone. Nine yards back in. And Jerome King will not bring it out. So Purdue will have the ball again at their 20-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. Well, Mike Guest keeping a hot hand. Three interceptions against Southern Methodist last week. And that ties the Buckeye single game mark for interceptions. And, uh, of course, the interceptions last week pretty well spread around. Ray Griffin, Dave Adkins, and Kelton Danzler, and Eddie Beeman all picking off passes there. So, I don't know. Maybe they're figuring Fat City again today. Skabinski is now uh, joined by Mike Brown. They have two setbacks in there for the first time. And it is given to Mike Brown. Tries uh, to go over the left side, but there's a flag down, and uh, everything stopped really before the snap of the ball. So, we'll see here what the call is going to be. It is against Ohio State. I think Gary Doolin leaned over uh, and uh, and didn't get back in time, or else he might have made contact uh, on that last play. So it should be a legal procedure for us. And that's what it is, and it's up to the 25-yard line. First down and five yards to go for the Boilermakers of Purdue. The Buckeyes have won the last five between these two teams. The last time Purdue won, they really pasted the Buckeyes here in 1967. Sweeping the right side is Skavinsky, and he is hit hard at the 27-yard line after a gain of a couple by Dave Atkins out of Xenia, the senior who has really been tough this year for the Buckeyes. At the 27-yard line, it will be second down and three. John Skabinski, whose father played for the Cleveland Browns. As a matter of fact, there are two other players on this team, Greg Palumbo and Mark Adamley. And I uh, knew all three of their dads who played at one time for the Browns. Joe Skabinski, Sam Palumbo, and uh, Tony Adamley, Dr. Tony from Kent. Here's the pass upfield, and this one is incomplete at the 40-yard line. It was intended for Ray Smith, and Mike Guest just cut him out from underneath. And all of a sudden, he went down, and he'll have something to think about now as Guess, 5'11", 175 pounds, really nailed him just as he was about to catch the ball. Let me say one thing about Mike Guess, Ken, between last week's uh, game and this week's game. Apparently, those interceptions have given him an awful lot of confidence back there. He, he is playing viciously. He is out there now wide on the right side on a one-on-one -on -one coverage with Ray Smith. And the handoff goes to Skabinski, driving over right tackle, and he slices a Across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Cousinow and Dantzler are there to make the tackle on the play, and that will be enough for a first down. They needed three, and he got three. Just over it to, uh, we'll call it the 31 yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Benny Leverett has come in, and Mike Brown goes out at tailback. Leverett has been a good ball carrier, averaging 5.1, and they go to the eye now, and Skabinski is in front of Leverett in the eye formation. And it is Herman handing off, and it is Leverett going between left guard and left tackle and cutting back a little, getting it out to the 34-yard line. Paul Russ, the defensive end, making the tackle for the Buckeyes at the 34, and it is second down and seven for the Boilermakers. It is 7-0 Ohio State, and Ohio State hasn't had the football on offense yet, as we're about four minutes in. A big crowd here today, overcast afternoon in Columbus but it is not affecting the throwing game. Second down, 7-34. Mark Herman, the quarterback, 
takes the ball, and he hands it off, and up the middle is Leverett, and he slams to the 40 and across it to the 41-yard line. Cousinow and Allegro on the tackle for Ohio State at the 41. They may measure. It might be enough for a first down. The officials calling time on themselves, and they will take a look now to see whether or not it is indeed a first down. It would appear as if Purdue is going to uh, probe the uh, left side of the line where Gary Doolin is in for uh, uh, Eddie Beeman, so we'll see what they're going to do. The score is Ohio State 7, Purdue nothing. We pause for 30 seconds. They did not make the first down. They go to the eye, and it is Skabinski and Leverett. Then Leverett, the second man through, gets the first down as he just dives into the pack and comes out to the 43 where Gary Doolin from Madisonville, Kentucky, and Tom Cousinaw of Fairview Park, Ohio, make the tackle. And so at the 43, it is first down and 10. So Purdue has been exercising ball control. They have had the ball, let's see, 5, 8, 11, 13 plays. But they trail 7 to nothing, and the Ohio State Buckeyes have not yet had the football. That is on offense. Mike Guess has had it one time. Now Herman, back deep, back deep, throws, and it is incomplete. In fact, he almost hit Steve McKenzie, his offensive guard. He was trying to get it out to Skabinski, who was swinging out of the backfield, but it did hit McKenzie, a big six foot four sophomore guard. And Allegro and Dantzler were getting a lot of push in there that time on the quarterback. And it'll be second and ten at the 43-yard line of the Boilermakers. Purdue is averaging 119 yards per game. And uh, John Skabinski is their leading rusher with 231 yards and 62 carries. And Tim Holy Cross tells us that Herman now is 2 of 5 for 24 yards. He hands off, and over the right tackle comes Skabinski, puts his head down and bucks his way to the 45. A uh, gain of 2 with Dave Atkins and Cousinow again in on the stop. The Buckeyes have been awfully tough against the run. They were that way against Ford of Southern Methodist last week. In fact, they kept that first unit in there most of the game to get ready for this one. It was a good workout for them. Third down and eight yards to go for the Boilermakers. They lost to Michigan State 19 to 14, beat Ohio U 44 to 7, lost to Notre Dame 31 to 24, beat Wake Forest 26 to 17. Again, they have two men out wide as Herman goes back and swings it out to Skabinski. He's hit at the 43 right on the line of scrimmage, and it is Kelton Dantzler, the steady defensive end from Warren, Ohio, who makes the tackle at the 43-yard line. So there is a loss in the play, and it will be fourth down and 10 yards to go for Purdue, and they have a kicking situation coming up. The Boilermakers will have to punt the ball. Dave Egan does their punting for them. His longest has been, uh, his average has been 37.1 in 16 attempts. He is back at his 35, and he boots it. Wobbly kick coming down. Ray Griffin at his 25 has it. Gets away from a tackler up to the 30 and is down at the 29-yard line. 7-0 Buckeyes. We pause 30 seconds. Good your service more. More good your car. Ohio State at their 29, first and 10, and Gerald goes back to throw, fires long downfield, Herman Jones at the 40 of Purdue, runs to the 30, somebody grabs him by the shirt, knocks him out at the 25-yard line. On the very first Ohio State offensive play of the afternoon, Gerald goes back and fires a 46-yard pass to Herman Jones. So they are going right back uh, with what Purdue uses. A we've got and pass. We've got Dave Purdy down on the sideline. Dave, is that going to make a big difference with that wind that he's back for Rod Gerald? Well, it sure appeared like at that time, Bob, because Mark Harmon was having some trouble throwing those passes, and uh, Gerald just came back with one. Gerald, 16 out of 28 going into this game, and that was a beautiful throw by Rod. And now he hands off to Paul Campbell, and the sophomore goes over right tackle. There's a flag down on the play as he went from the 25-yard line into the 23, so we'll see what that's about. The tackle was made by linebacker Fred Arrington, a name you'll hear a lot this afternoon. I think it's grabbing the face mask, and if so, that's going to cost the Boilermakers as Paul Campbell took the ball and uh, went over right tackle. Campbell has carried 30 times for 129 yards, an average of 4.3. Dave Purdy, the wind is kicking up a little bit up here. How is it down on the floor? Well, it does appear to be a factor, like I just mentioned, Bob, because Herman was having trouble throwing the ball. Uh, Rod just had a good, strong pass, and I think it's going to make a little bit difference in this first quarter. 
All right, David, thank you. We'll get back to you. There's the official indication. A penalty face mask against Purdue that puts the ball down on about the 11 or 12-yard line with more play-by-play. -play. Ken Coleman. At the 12, it is first and 10, and Joel Payton goes in for Paul Campbell. They go to the robust tee, and they've got the two tight ends in there. As Rod Gerald hands it off, and there goes Payton, and he is running it into the seven-yard line where Kevin Motts, a linebacker, makes the tackle. Payton, who has been just tremendous. Uh, this young man has scored four times for the Buckeyes this year, and he has a nose for that end zone. So from the 12 into the 7, it is second down and five yards to go. Lang is in at center. Doug Mackey is playing right tackle now. Joe Robinson is out of there. So it is Payton and Harrell and Springs in the robust tee in back of Rod Gerald. The quarterback in his crouch gets the ball and he hands it off and driving again is Payton and he's down to the one. Going over left tackle, cutting in there behind Ernie Andrea and Chris Ward. He just smacks his way. Well, they put it down on the two. Marcus Jack Jackson, a sophomore tackle from Lima, Ohio, making the tackle. So at the two-yard line, that's a first down and goal to go for the Buckeyes. Eight minutes and five seconds remaining here in this uh, first quarter. 7-0 Ohio State and again the robust tee. Jaco and Moore are the tight ends. Rod Gerald ready. Quarterback takes it, hands it off to Payton, and he has his fifth touchdown of the year. Joel Payton in for the score, and it is 13 to nothing, Ohio State. He carried all three times after they got it in there to the 12-yard uh, line following the face mask call. So a big 46-yard pass to Herman Jones. And the Buckeyes uh, move the ball in a matter of five plays from their own 29 to score. Yonikievsky will try for the point. And this one is blocked. The Boilermakers blocked the uh, try for the point after Kevin Watts did it. And so now we have a, a penalty marker down. We right? have a flag on that. We'll see if uh, the left side didn't jump off that line. And or, they did. Uh, Purdue. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so they'll get another shot at it now. It is 13 to nothing. Ohio State out in front. Well, Bob, they'll be calling that end zone Peyton Place if he keeps this up. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had to use it once, you know. Okay. That's All his right. fifth of the year, and he's been something. He did not play in the first couple of games. Well, let me tell you something about Peyton Place. Uh, Coach Hayes was telling me uh, Thursday morning, he said uh, uh, Peyton is probably is the best back out of the robust formation. And he sure did it just now. Here's another try for the point after. Be more another, flags. Yeah, another flag down, and this one is up. Well, they did not give any kind of a signal. It is, it is good. Now, let's see who the penalty is on. They indicated that it was through there, but they're still milling around. So, uh, now what? Time is being called here. Well, there's a, a bit of a discussion uh, going on. Ricardo Volley calling for time. Now they've called a penalty apparently against the Buckeyes. I think the Buckeyes are going to try for two now. It would appear that's the case because of the unit they have in there. Well, let's see. They, I think they're being charged with a timeout. Volley did, I see, motion for a timeout and the penalty was against Purdue, so it moves it into a yard and a half away or a yard away and therefore they will. It's offside against Purdue, so they will indeed go for two points. It is 13 to nothing. And they've got that uh, robust T backfield in operation with Springs and Peyton and Harrell in back of Gerald. Peyton's averaging 5.6 yards per carry, 141 total yards on the ground for the Buckeyes this year. From mentor Joel Peyton. Coach Hayes says the kid is so quiet you don't even know he's around. Except when he has that football in his hands, and you sure know it then. And he uh, undoubtedly will turn out the way it is right now. He's the Pete Johnson of this ball club. He, uh, he gets that ball. Purdue with 16 offensive plays, the Buckeyes with five, but we're in the process. We lead now 13 to nothing. It appears they're going to go for two. So that would make it if they score. Make it 15 nothing. A timeout on the field. It uh, was called. Uh, I first saw Ricardo Volley running over and uh, giving a sign to the bench, but somebody in there called it, and uh, so the Buckeyes get ready to go again. 
interesting uh, figure on Purdue, incidentally. Their longest pass completion. A couple of names out of the past. Len Dawson to Edrich Barnes in 1955 against Northwestern. They had a 95-yard completion. Joe Robinson aggravated a ankle injury he had picked up a little earlier this year. So uh, they're not sure how long he's going to be out. I would assume he might sit out the entire game if the way if the things continue the way they're going, the way they appear to be going right now. So Joe Robinson from Paulding is on the bench with a aggravated ankle injury. And now they come out into that robust tee. Rod Gerald at quarterback. Three men set in behind him. He hands off, and driving in there is Joel Payton. And it is 15-0 Buckeyes as we pause 30 seconds. This is Ken Coleman with Bob Connors at Ohio Stadium. 15-0 Buckeyes, 7.49 left first quarter. And this, of course, a big boost for Ohio State because when you have a passing game and you have to start to play catch-up, it is difficult. Tom Morris will be doing the booting. Vogler, Bach, and Hornick to his right. Blinko, Guess, Bell, Duncan Griffin, Laughlin, and Schwartz to his left. Kicking from the open to the closed end of the stadium. Back deep, we have Jerome King and Rick Moss standing at the goal line. In the two kickoffs thus far, one has been brought back. The other was kicked deep into the end zone. Now Tom Morris coming up on the ball. And his kick. Good boot. Goes about... Four yards, five yards back in. It will not be run out by Rick Moss. So once again, it goes to Purdue. They will have it on their 20. First down, 10 yards to go. Well, with that wind at Oris' back, and he was kicking with uh, the open end to his back, gusting up to 15 to 24 miles an hour, is getting a little extra mileage on that. And, of course, Rod Gerald with the first play he threw to uh, uh, to Jimmy Moore. It was just absolutely beautiful. And not only was it a long gainer, but he had seemingly four, five, six seconds to get rid of the ball. Pete Quinn is in there at center now for Purdue, and they go to the I formation. They have Skabinski and Leverett in behind. And the handoff goes to Leverett. He goes back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all he goes as Gary Doolin and Dave Atkins wrap him up at the 20-yard line. It will be second down and 10. The Buckeyes with Ross, Cato, Doolin, and Dantzler up front. Atkins, Brown, and Cousinow backing. Guess, Allegro, Griffin, and Mills as the deep men. Tim Eubank alternates with Dave Young at tight end, bringing the plays in and out. And he just came into the lineup. They have uh, Reggie Arnold out wide to the right, and on the left side, they have Ray Smith again. Guess is out there with him. Back goes Herman to throw it. Gets a little time. Wobbly pass taken at the 22-yard line and hit immediately and taken down by Lenny Mills as Benny Leverett. So they don't get much out of that one. The pass was a bit on the wobbly side, and the ball is being spotted. Well, it's being spotted back at the 20. So I believe it must have been ruled an incompletion. That'll make it third down coming up. And 10 yards to go for the first down for Purdue. One back in behind. It is Skabinski, and it is handed off to John on the draw play, and he gets a couple of yards to the 22-yard line. Again, it is Cousinow. Delighted to be back in that lineup, and Ross there to make the tackle. At the 22, it'll be fourth down and eight, so they'll have to kick it. The first punt was 32 yards by Dave Egan, whose average 37.1 is kicking into a stiff wind. Standing at his own 45 is Ray Griffin. Standing at the Purdue 45 is Mike Guess. So Guess plays shallow, Griffin plays deep, and Egan gets ready to punt into a gusting wind from the close to the open end of Ohio Stadium. 15 to nothing Buckeyes. Here's the snap and a hard rush. It is blocked. And it is being chased down and out of bounds around the two-yard line. And that was Lenny Mills. Lenny Mills in there to block it. And it goes out of bounds on the two-yard line. It goes to the Buckeyes. And, man, are they playing football this afternoon. They are within three seconds of an undefeated season. Losing to Oklahoma with three seconds left. And they are going hard against Purdue today. They will now have the ball two and one-half yards away from another touchdown. On the last drive, they went 71 yards in five plays, a 46-yard pass to Jones, the key, and hard running by Peyton. It is the robust tee, and the ball is handed off, and Peyton goes over between right guard and right tackle, and he is hit 
at about the line of scrimmage might have gained a yard. Trying to pile it in over the right side. And Kevin Motts, linebacker, is underneath with some help. And it will be second down and goal to go as we pause 10 seconds for station identification. John Frank, Bill Patters, Dave Parr, Bob Connors, Don Alexander, Sammy, Dave Claiborne. Mayo. The teams play every day on WTVN Radio Columbus. Ron Barwig comes in. Bill Jaco out at tight end for the Buckeyes. Again, they go to the robust tee. Second down goal at the one-yard line. Gerald handing off and driving in there for the touchdown is Joel Payton. So he has his second of the day, his sixth of the year, and it is 21 to nothing, Ohio State. Lenny Mills blocking a punt try, and this has been some first quarter for the Buckeyes. Vlade Yonikievsky gets ready to try for the point. Jim Harold puts it down. The kick is good. The score, 22-0 Ohio State. We pause 30 seconds. The Buckeyes are leading Purdue 22 to nothing. Five minutes to go in the first period. Uh, Buckeye, former Buckeye quarterback Dave Purdy down behind the Buckeye bench. Dave, uh, it's turning into somewhat of a lapper as of this moment. Well, I don't think the Bucks thought it was going to be this easy. I think we may see a little bit of change in uh, Purdue's passing when they get to win this second quarter. Here's the kickoff, and it goes deep into the end zone and will not be run out by Rick Moss. And so, again, it's the Boilermakers at their 20-yard line. First down, 10 to go. Uh, Dave, you still with us? I'm here. All right, let me ask you this. Uh, from an offensive standpoint, to have uh, to have a 20, uh, 22-point lead right now, it's going to give uh, Coach Hayes an opportunity to see some more younger people. That's right, Bob. I know how important it is to get in some playing time, and I think that would be real important for some of our young bucks. Thank you, David. Now back to Ken Coleman. And uh, Purdue has had the ball most of this first uh, quarter, believe it or not. Ohio State has not had it that much, but boy, have they capitalized. Now sweeping around the left end is Benny Leverett, and he's not going to get a thing. As Lenny Mills and Dave Atkins are up to make the stop on him just about on the line of scrimmage. At the 20-yard line, it will be second and 10. It is not raining. It is overcast and mild. The wind is blowing uh, from the open to the closed end of the stadium. Herman, four out of seven for 20 yards and intercepted once by Mike Guess for a touchdown. But uh, it is interesting, isn't it, that uh, Purdue would have had the football more times in this first quarter than the Buckeyes have had it. Now Herman goes back and drops it off to Skabinski over the middle again on that little swing pass, and he takes it out to about the 23-yard line, and Cousinow is there on the tackle. So that will bring it out to the 23 and make it third down and seven yards to go for the Boilermakers. Herman, they say, has great poise. And uh, you have to wonder now if this isn't going to unsettle him somewhat. This has been his toughest outing thus far. Purdue's had it for 20 plays. Ohio State has had it for seven. Now back to pass again, Herman. He's looking to throw on the left side, and it is intercepted by Dantzler. And he's out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That's where he caught it, and he stepped right out. Kelton Dantzler on the interception at the Purdue 30, and once again, the ball over to Ohio State. First down 10 at the Boilermaker 30-yard line. Well, about the only thing Purdue can hope for now is to uh, uh, see what kind of game plan they can come up with uh, with the wind at their back as uh, they'll be ready to change here in just a couple of minutes. Now the Buckeyes have their two wide receivers, Harold and Jones, both in there as they bring out uh, one of the tight ends, Greg Stora, and both of the wide receivers come out left. Jones is the end, and uh, the slot back is Harold. And in the I formation, Gerald has it. He's going back, looking to throw. Fires it down on the right side, and it is incomplete for Springs. A fine defensive effort by Pat Harris from New Albany, Indiana. There are on this uh, Indiana team, Purdue team, 11 Ohioans, nobody from Indiana on the Buckeye roster. 
So at the 30, it is second down and 10, and Rod is putting that ball up here in this first quarter. And he can uh, throw long where Herman has not been able to. Well, he's had an opportunity uh, uh, this afternoon, as we mentioned, Ken not alibying for Purdue in any way. But he's had that wind at his back the times that he has had to pass. And on this last pattern, when he threw over to the... Uh, uh, to the right side to Ron Springs. He had some people open up the middle and up the left side, so we might see him come right back with another pass play. The last two weeks, the team that's won the toss has elected to kick off because of the win factor, but Purdue, with the wind uh, against them, decided not to, and it has cost them to uh, some degree. Well, I think they got us here for delay of game and uh, tack five yards onto that. So the ball goes back to the 35-yard line of the boiler, uh, yeah, the Boilermakers, and it is going to be second down. And 15 yards to go. Second and 15 for the Buckeyes. They come out into the eye. Again, they have Jones and Harold both wide left. Jones has the split end, and Gerald back to look to throw. Guns it on the right side to Springs. Takes it at the 31, running down the right side to the 27-yard line. Ron Springs from Williamsburg, Virginia, tackled by defensive end Lee Larkins and linebacker Fred Arrington. He keeps looking to the one side and then throwing to the other, and that one takes it into the 27-yard line, and that's a gain of eight yards, and that'll make it third and seven to go for Ohio State. Both of those uh, pass plays have been over to the right side in two springs, so we'll see if he's setting somebody up uh, to the left side or straight up the middle. And again, he goes to the same formation with Jones a split end wide left and Harrell a slot back inside him. Third down, seven. And it is Gerald handing off, and here comes Campbell into the 15, onto the 10, carries somebody with him, and is into the 10-yard line. Pat Harris finally took him down, but Paul Campbell came over right tackle, and he carved a hole of his own to take it into the 10-yard line, where it is first down and 10 to go on a 16-yard pickup. So the Buckeyes today have just been tremendous. Now, they're sending Doug Mackey in and Peyton back in with that uh, robust T lineup. Peyton is uh, 16 yards, six carries, two touchdowns, and a conversion. So it is first and 10 at the 10. And Gerald hands it off, and going in for the touchdown is Peyton. No trouble at all. I mean, he just cut in between left guard and left tackle, and nobody laid a hand on him. Joel Peyton coming into his own this afternoon. He's been on the threshold in the last couple of games. He played a great game against SMU last Saturday night in the Cotton Bowl, but he has been something else today. And it is 28 to nothing as Yonikieski kicks the ball, and it is good. 29 nothing, Buckeyes. We pause 30 seconds. At Ohio Stadium, this is Ken Coleman with Bob Connors. It is 29-0 Buckeyes with 2.16 left to play. In what has been a long first quarter, more ways than one for the Boilermakers. Ohio State has just really been tough today. A lot of people were saying during the week here in Columbus, we'll find out about this football team this afternoon. A lot of things. There's the kickoff by Orris, and he booms this one out of the end zone beyond Jerome King, beyond everybody, and it will again come to the 20-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for Purdue. Well, we have two minutes and 16 seconds to go until Purdue gets that win at their back. Uh, oddly enough, uh, Purdue has not played that bad a ball on offense. Uh, a mistake here, uh, uh, but I think they're being penalized more for their mistakes today than, uh, than SMU was last week. Well, they have made some big ones, and Ohio State has capitalized every time. At the 21st and 10, Skabinski gets the ball for Herman and drives in between left guard and left tackle and gets about five yards, maybe just a shade more than that. Aaron Brown, the middle guard from Warren, is in on the tackle for Ohio State, and the ball is at the 25. They're changing football now. It's a little bit damp, and you have that prerogative. At the 25, it'll be second and five. If you were to tell somebody a minute and 51 to go in the first period and the total offense was Purdue 51 yards and Ohio State 97 yards, there's no way you could justify a 29-zip score. <laughs> Not hardly. Second down five, 25-yard line, and over right tackle and running well over the 30 and onto the 34 is Mike Brown out of Macon, Georgia, and he gets a first down. Mike Brown 
to the 34-yard line, Paul Ross and Joe Allegro tackling for the Buckeyes, and it is first and 10 for Purdue. So I think now he's trying to get something established. Tim Eubank goes out. Dave Young comes back in at tight end. He may be uh, going to settle things down just a bit here until he gets that win that is back, and then he'll put it up for grabs in the second quarter. He hands off, and it is Mike Brown into right tackle from the 34, a couple of yards to the 36, Cousinow and Doolin making the stop for the Buckeyes, and it will be second down and eight to go at the 36-yard line. And again, they alternate the tight ends, Eubank and Young. They will do that uh, throughout the day. Young has caught 13. They say that he's a splendid receiver. Now, again, one back in behind the quarterback, and Skabinski is that man. Skabinski gets the ball, comes over right tackle, cuts back to the inside, goes across the 40, up to the 41. Kelton Dantzler makes the tackle at the 41-yard line, and that's going to make it third down and three to go for Purdue. 32 seconds left to play in this first quarter. Herman uh, getting his play from Dave Young. They have Pete Quinn at center, John Finucan from Cleveland, Ohio, captain at left guard, Steve McKenzie at right guard, John Lefebvre and Mike Barberich are the tackles for the Boilermakers. The handoff goes to Skabinski, over right tackle, up to the 44, maybe the 45-yard line. Gary Doolin and Kelton Dantzler making the tackle. That'll be enough for a first down for the Boilermakers. And they just want to right now control that football. Well, whether or not uh, Coach Hayes leaves uh, Joel Payton in the lineup this afternoon is, uh, is something we don't know. Whether he wants to give some of those other backs some works. But Payton already with three touchdowns. And the, uh, state, or the Ohio State individual record is by Pete Johnson when he had five in one game against North Carolina in 75. That's the end of the first quarter. The score 29 to nothing in favor of Ohio State. This is the Ohio State Football Network. This quarter. Purdue opens the second quarter, and here's Mike Brown over right tackle from his own 45. He runs it over to the Ohio State 42-yard line as he slices off 13 yards. Lenny Mills making the tackle, and another first down for the Boilermakers. First down. Purdue had six first downs. Ohio State four in the first quarter, and Ohio State leads 29-0. This quarter brought to you by Motorist Insurance Companies. Remember, life, auto, home, or business, Motorist Insurance serves you. First down, 10 at the Ohio State 42. This is the deepest penetration for the Boilermakers, and the handoff goes again to Mike Brown. Over right tackle to the 39-yard line. He gains three. Dave Atkins makes the tackle at the 39, and it'll be second and seven. John Skabinski, Purdue, the game's leading rusher. 31 yards, nine carries. And I hope we don't see now what we saw in the second period of the SMU game when the play got a little ragged and uh, uh, SMU started to run a little bit on us uh, on, the, uh, on the Buckeyes. So we'll just have to... I know that's the kind of play that Coach Hayes does not like to see. Second down, seven, 39-yard line, and Herman goes back, fakes twice, goes to throw it, and it is incomplete. A great rush made by Joe Allegro, a safety blitz, and he got him, and that is ring around the collar just as he was trying to throw the ball. That uh, huge roar you just heard from the crowd, uh, Michigan State is leading Michigan 7-0 in the first period. And here today we're watching a Purdue team that beat Michigan last year. And they're trailing Ohio State 29 to nothing. It is third down seven at the Ohio State 39-yard line. Benny Leverett is back into the backfield again. Ray Smith coming out wide to the left. And back goes Herman looking to throw. He's being rushed again by Dantzler. And it is Dantzler and Brown sacking him at the 49-yard line in his own territory. A big, big loss on the play of 12 yards. Fourth and 19 coming up at the 49-yard line of the Boilermakers. So the first time that uh, Herman has the wind at his back, he cannot take advantage of it. And Egan from his 35 will kick. Griffin and Guess are back deep. He's punted twice, an average of 16 counting the one that was blocked. Here's the boot coming down on the 14 and bouncing along. Is it going out of bounds? It looks like it went out about the one-foot line. Let's see. We'll be back uh, 
to find out. Well, let's check it. They're bringing it out to the 20. It did go into the end zone. I thought for a moment that the official was indicating that it did not get into the end zone, but it had. So it goes to the 20, a 51-yard kick, and it'll be first down, 10 yards to go for Ohio State. Dantzler and Brown, who forced uh, Purdue into that punting situation with the sack of uh, Mark Herman, that is each their fifth sack if they split it. Now the Buckeyes come out, and Paul Campbell and Ron Springs are in the eye formation behind Rod Gerald. Gerald, who was hurt in the Purdue game a year ago and gave way to Jim Pacenta for the balance of the season, hands it off. Springs runs it up the middle to the 24-yard line. Kevin Motts and Calvin Clark making the tackle at the 24 to second down and six. It is Larkins, Jackson, Clark, and Turner up front. Rui from Cincinnati, Ohio, Roger Rui. Fred Arrington and Kevin Motts are the backers. Pat Harris and Jerome King at the corners. Paul Beery and Willie Harris are the safety men. Second down, six Buckeyes, 24-yard line in their own territory. Gerald handing off and getting a yard is Campbell and taken as he went right up the middle. Started to slant back a little bit toward the middle of the line, and he was taken down on the play with uh, Arrington in there along with Larkins at the 25. And one of the Buckeyes is shaken up in there. Let's see who that is. It looks like it might be Barwick. Ron Barwick it is. So they'll attend to him. The score is 29 to nothing. Ohio State leads and action will continue after this from Motorist Insurance Company. Formation, Jimmy Harrell, wide left, third down four. And Lang, the center, hands it off. Gerald is keeping the ball on the option. And he is to the line of scrimmage, and that's all, as he tried to swing the left side and did not get anything. And in there on the tackle was Mike Bergamy. So it's fourth down, four to go. Ohio State at their own 26-yard line, and they have a kicking situation. Ohio State will have to kick the football now, and in there to do it is Dave McKee. McKee, the punter, standing at his 12-yard line. Porter to snap for him. Harris and King are back deep. And he gets plenty of time, boots it into the wind, and a fair catch is called for and taken at the 41-yard line of the Boilermakers by Jerome King. So Purdue will have it on their 41, first down and 10. A 33-yard kick by McKee. Well, we'll see what Mr. Herman can do now with the good stiff wind at his back. And if his offensive line can give him a little protection, maybe we can see some of that passing that uh, we had expected to see. And I'm sure with 11.30 to go in the first half, the Buckeyes leading 29 to nothing. We didn't really expect to see quite this. Herman, 156 attempts, 89 completions. Handing off and running up the middle is John Skabinski from the 41. He gets to the 45. The tacklers, Byron Cato and Dave Atkins. And it will be second down and six to go at the 45-yard line of Purdue. Mark Herman is four of nine for 20 yards and two interceptions. This quarter being brought to you by Motorist Insurance Companies. Remember, life, auto, home, or business, Motorist Insurance serves you. Reggie Arnold goes out wide to the right. He's the only wide man at the moment. Again, the eye, and Herman handing off, and it is... Mike Brown, and he is up to the line of scrimmage and hit there. And Byron Cato from Lorraine makes the stop for the Buckeyes. No gain, and it is third down and six. This is a little bit surprising because in the first quarter, when it was uh, not like this, 29 to nothing, Herman was throwing the ball often, early. Now in the second, he's had the ball twice in good field position. And he's been running it since late in the first period. Aaron Brown just shot the gap. And uh, let's see whether he was pulled over there or went on his own. It is on Aaron Brown. So from the 45-yard line, it goes up to the 50, where it'll be third down and one to go for Purdue. Well, the Buckeyes next week will be traveling to Iowa. And Bob and I will be going along with them to bring you that one. Then the following week, we'll be at Northwestern before we come home for home against Wisconsin and that Wisconsin team today is going to try to go 5-0 and 
Third down one at the midfield stripe, and it is Kavinsky getting the one and more. He goes to the 46-yard line of the Buckeyes. Doolin and Dantzler make the tackle first and ten for Purdue. We just received word from the bench that uh, Ron Barwig has a sprained ankle, and more likely than not will be out for the rest of the game. Jeff Logan, speaking of sprained ankles, is out of action for the Buckeyes, has not played at all, and I'm sure now definitely will not. Again, they send Reggie Arnold, who has caught 20, his longest 48, out wide to the left. Herman hands it off again, and it is Mike Brown slamming up the middle and going from the 46 into the 43-yard line. Cousin Al and Cato making the tackle at the 43, and it is second down and seven to go for Purdue. It looks as though they have a 29 to nothing lead. Ken, while we have a moment, let's say hello to those listening along the Buckeye Network in Bel Air over WOMP and Auburn Dayton on WING. Glad to have you folks along with us this year. Yes, indeed. Second down, seven at the 43. Now Herman's pitching, and it is a great catch made at the 22-yard line, a diving catch by Reggie Arnold. He just made a shoestring grab of the ball as he was going down, and uh, it is a 21-yard pickup, and now... They have the ball at the Ohio State 22-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for Purdue. So he might have been just wanting to get the run set up enough to take the pressure of him off him. They were sacking, they were getting through to him, and he might have just decided, well, I better, Jim Young might have decided, let's get this thing established and then get back to the air. Now he hands off, it is Kabinsky to the 20-yard line, a pickup of two, slashing in behind right guard and right tackle, Cousin Al and Cato on the tackle. Well, wow. fumble, fumble there. Fumble, and it is the Buckeyes ball at the 20, almost sort of a delayed call underneath. And uh, Ken, I didn't get the number of the guy who came in there, but I thought somebody was going to get penalized for a late hit. It was Joe Allegro? Yeah, it was. Joe Allegro was the man who came up with the ball. It was kind of a delayed reaction to the whole thing, but the Buckeyes have it on their 20-yard line, and it is first down and 10. So the Boilermakers again cough up the ball. I had thought that the play had been blown dead and they were going to get Allegro for a late hit, but he went after the seed. I thought it was uh, certainly uh, over as far as the play was concerned. It's at the 21st and 10. Rod Gerald handing on the draw play to Ron Springs. Over left tackle and up to the 23-yard line. And Mike Bergamy, a sophomore, making the tackle. It is second down, seven to go at the 23. Total offensive figures so far, 120 yards for Purdue and 103 for Ohio State. Uh, Purdue with nine first downs and the Buckeyes with five. Second down, seven Buckeyes at their 23. Herman Jones wide right. And here comes Springs up the middle across the 30, out to the 33. That's a first down for the Buckeyes on a 10-yard pickup by Ron Springs. Willie Harris made the tackle. Going into this game, Ron Springs had carried 83 times, an average of 4.4. His longest, 33. He has three touchdowns. You fan? Go ahead, Ken. 33-yard line, first and 10. As the Buckeyes come out into the I formation, Campbell in there, and so is Springs. It is Springs to the 40, 45, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown. Springs down the sideline on the left. 67-yard touchdown run by Ron Springs, who went over left side, broke it at about the midfield stripe. He was being chased by Jerome King. He couldn't catch him. 35-0 Ohio State. Two plays prior to that, when Springs had gone over the left side, I said he's going to, I was thinking to myself, he's going to break one out of there real quick, and I didn't want to say it. You know how you always hold back yeah, that kind of thing. But it just beautiful setup for that run for Ron Springs. Carroll puts it down. Yonikievsky kicks it. And it is good. The score is 36 to nothing. Ohio State action continues after this from Motorist Insurance Company. Well, it doesn't seem to matter, Bob Connors, uh, which direction they're going in today. They're just going for the end zone. It has been something to watch. Well, Joel Payton with three touchdowns, Mike Guess with one, Ron Springs with one. And whatever the Buckeyes seem to be doing today, it is just absolutely working. 
They've looked as awesome as I've, as I've seen them look uh, for that younger unit in quite a while. So Tom Morris gets ready to kick off into the wind from the close to the open end of the stadium. The ball is taken at the three-yard line by Rick Moss up to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, 30, 35, 40. Mike Guess makes the tackle, a block tackle by Guess, a beauty on the far side of the field, a splendid run back by Rick Moss. And let's see where they bring the ball in to the inbounds marker. It's spotted at the 47-yard line of Purdue. Mike Guess with a big save on that play. His speed and quickness. Of course, Mike's all uh, ready to go with a 60-yard interception and return this afternoon for young Mike Guess from Columbus. Skabinski has carried 40, uh, 12 times for 41 yards. Brown has 30 yards and 6 carries. Here's a pass thrown out to the left incomplete for Ray Smith as Ross was charging in there on Herman and he did not have much time to throw the ball. So at the Boilermakers 47, it is second down and 10 to go. This quarter being brought to you by Motorist Insurance Companies. Remember, life, auto, home, or business, Motorist Insurance serves you. Reggie Arnold dot to the right. Ray Smith on the left. And it is handed off. And Mike Brown is going to be thrown for a loss by Gary Doolin. He just got the ball, and then he got Doolin. And the loss takes the ball back to the 44-yard line to make it third and 13 as we pause 10 seconds for station identification. Win an autographed copy of Woody Hayes' book you win with people on the Bob Connor Show Monday. Listen for the Buckeye replay of the day weekday afternoons on WTVN 610 Radio Columbus. Third down, 13 yards to go for Purdue. And Herman handing off Skabinski over the right side, sweeps around the corner, gets it across midfield to the 48-yard line of Ohio State. And again, Gary Doolin makes the tackle. Make that Mike Brown on the carry. Mike Brown, the 218-pound senior from Macon, Georgia, over to the Ohio State 47-yard line. So they have to punt now with a fourth down situation and about uh, four yards to go for the first down. The kicker is Egan. He is standing at his 38. Griffin is back deep. And here comes the boot. And it is bouncing on the 11 into the end zone. Ohio State leads 36 to nothing. Action continues after this from Motorist Insurance Company. Insurance. You know us. Ohio State at their 20. First down 10. Rod Gerald optioning right. He keeps the ball. He flips it back. It is taken by Springs. He's over the 30. 35 40. Cuts to the inside. He's up to midfield. Springs runs 30 yards. Splendid piece of running. Jerome King finally got him. He came on the option play around the right corner, down the sideline, cut back to the inside, and ran at 30 to the 50. And when he made that cut back in about the 49-yard line, standing there waiting to throw a block for him, waiting for Ron Springs to get there, was number 79, Chris Ward out of Dayton. 6'2 and 272 pounds. And, of course, at, a, at an intersection like that, they didn't know which way who was going to cut. Ward, an All-American, springs 114 yards now in five carries. First and 10 at the 50. Optioning left, Gerald. He's got the ball. He's into the 45, onto the 40. And that should be enough for a first down at the 39. And Paul Beery is the man who makes the tackle for the Boilermakers. That's good for 11 yards. So they go 30, then they go 11. And at the 39-yard line of Purdue, Ohio State has the football. Ricky Johnson from Santa Maria, California, in there for Ron Springs, who gets a big round of applause as he comes to the sideline. He has impressed today. And Johnson is a man who has been, uh, well, kind of waiting in the wings. A lot of people think he's going to turn out to be a splendid running back. The handoff goes to Campbell. He's up the middle, and he's racing with the ball, and he's into the 22-yard line. So they're just beating up eating up big chunks of yardage now. This time from the 39 to the 22 for a gain of 17 yards, another first down. So it's a 30-yard gain, then 11, now 17. And the tackler was Pat Harris. And we still have five minutes and 20 seconds to play in the first half. Herman Jones coming out wide right. It is flipped, and running with the ball is Johnson, swinging around right end, hit at the 20, 
and down at the 19 flag on the play. Penalty marker down in at the 19 yard line as Ricky Johnson, the sophomore, 188 pound six footer. Looks like holding is the call on the Buckeyes and that is the case. So that will cost. Well, they caught Ken Fritz in a holding situation there. Uh, it would appear that uh, Woody has gone back to his uh, to his triple option uh, offense. Ken, after having done a little bit of everything, most of the score, well, early scoring, of course, was done by the defense. But uh, he appears to have gone back to uh, the uh, to the triple options in his veer. And we'll see what uh, what backs he's going to keep in. Ron Springs, of course, out with a standing ovation for uh, his long runs this afternoon. And the Buckeyes look superb no matter what offense they go into. It is first and 24, the holding from the spot of the call. It's at the 36-yard line. And Rod Gerald goes back. He fakes. He fades. He fires. Herman Jones, it is intercepted down at the five-yard line. He was aiming for Jones, but it was picked off by Jerome King. And the ball goes over to Purdue as Jones tackled the interceptor immediately at the seven-yard line. So the Boilermakers have the ball at their seven, first down and ten. I would have to say, uh, not necessarily in defense of uh, Rod Gerald, but that's the thing that uh, Mark Herman had to put up with in the first period when he was throwing with uh, throwing into the wind, and I think probably the wind just held that ball up just a little bit enough to make that interception possible. It appeared that way. The ball kind of wavered up there, and uh, it, you couldn't get as much on it as you would like. At the 7, first and 10, and here comes Mike Brown over right tackle, swinging out to the 10-yard line on a gain of 3. Mike Brown, who uh, has averaged 5.1, tackled by Kelton Dantzler and Tom Roach. And it will be second down and 7 at the 10-yard line for Purdue. For the baseball fans with us, at the end of three, the Yankees are leading Kansas City 4-2. to two. Second down, seven at the 10-yard line. Mark Herman, six-foot, five-inch freshman quarterback, handing off. Running straight ahead is Mike Brown. He gets a yard. Paul Ross takes him at the 11-yard line, and that will make it third down and six to go. This quarter being brought to you by Motorist Insurance Companies. Remember, life, auto, home, or business, Motorist Insurance serves you. Any preference in the World Series at all, Ken? Not really. I'd like to see the Reds, but uh, that's not likely. <laughs> <laughs> not at this stage of the <laughs> no, game, anyway. Not hardly. Third and six at the 11. And the quarterback, Herman. Hands off again, and once more it is Mike Brown, and he lunges forward, and he kind of skidded along the top, gets out to about the 17-yard line, might have gotten the first down. Atkins and Dantzler make the tackle, and they got a first down. He took it out to the 17. The original line of scrimmage had been the 7. So it is first and 10. Joe Payton with three touchdowns this afternoon. The uh, Buckeye record is five, set by... Pete Johnson back in 1975 against North, uh, North Carolina. Now we have again Reggie Arnold coming out wide on the left. They go to the I formation. First down 10, 17-yard line. Herman handing off again to Mike Brown. And Brown is taken at the line of scrimmage by Paul Ross. He fell forward a yard to the 18 to make it second and nine. Strange thing, they've used uh, Skabinski, and last week, Benny Leverett more than anybody, but uh, today it's been Mike Brown carrying the football often for Purdue. And it is second down and nine for the Boilermakers at their 18-yard line. Only one back in behind the quarterback, and Herman hands it off to that back. It's Skabinski, and he is tackled immediately by Doolin for a loss. Gary Doolin, Madisonville, Kentucky, He's starting in uh, place of uh, Eddie Beeman this afternoon. Beeman will not see action at all. Gary Doolin, he's a sophomore, a big one, 254 pounds, six foot four. So that makes it third down and ten for Purdue at their own 17-yard line. Ohio State is in front, 36 to nothing. I remember picture day this year. Uh, Gary Doolin wanted to know if uh, we're going to be able to give him some pub this year. 
And he's going to get a lot of publicity after his action today. He's been very good. And here's Herman throwing, and the ball is caught by Leverett at the 20. Runs it up to the 23. Dantzler and Cousinow and Atkins all converge on him at that spot. And that's not going to be enough. That'll make it fourth down and four to go for the Boilermakers. They've punted four times, 32, 50, 48, and blocked. And the man who does the kicking is Dave Egan. Griffin is standing at his 40. Ray waiting on this one. Here's the kick coming upfield. Ray Griffin at his 41. Takes it. Starts left. Goes back inside his 35. Up to the 40. And lunges out to the 43-yard line. Almost was spilled back inside his uh, 35. But uh, it's a 35-yard kick. And the ball is going to be put down finally at the 43-yard line of Ohio State. And there it is first down and 10 to go for the Buckeyes with a minute 36 seconds left to play in the first half. So Rod Gerald comes in from the sideline now. Very big crowd on an overcast afternoon, but it has not rained since the opening whistle. Here's Gerald optioning right and handing it off to Campbell. He fumbles it but keeps it as he gets to the 46, 47-yard line. And the tackler is Roger Rui, who is a captain on this team out of Cincinnati, a senior, 6'4 and 230. That's when you know uh, when you get in the breaks your way, Ken, is when you spin off one tackler, uh, fumble the ball, it bounces right back into your arms. That's what happened with Paul Campbell. Here is uh, Campbell again, over right guard and getting three yards up to the 50-yard line. And Roger Rui again makes the tackle for Purdue. And uh, that will make it third down for the Buckeyes. And about three to go, and we have less than a minute to play now in this first half. Gerald hands it off, and Campbell takes it into the 48-yard line. It looks like he's a little shy of a first down. Let's see whether or not he was able to possibly do it, and he didn't. And so McKee is running in there to kick. Dave McKee in there to do the kicking for the Buckeyes. He has punted just once for 33 yards. Kicking into the wind from the close to the open end of Ohio Stadium from our left to right. Back deep is Pat Harris along with Jerome King. And we're going to get a timeout on Ohio State. This quarter has been brought to you by Motorist Insurance Companies. Remember, life, auto, home, or business. Motorist Insurance serves you. And Bob, we notice now that the Buckeyes have changed their minds. With fourth down and a little to go, they had sent McKee out there. They called timeout, and they've decided they'll go for it. With 25 seconds left to play, they have Peyton in there. They've got the full house... Uh, Backfield, uh, robust tee situation. Peyton, the man in the middle with Springs and Harrell alongside, so they're going to try and make it. Fourth down, and not quite a yard to get for the first down. Mark Lang is over the ball at center. Rod Gerald gets it from him, and he hands it off to Peyton, and he goes to the 45-yard line. First down. Well, 21 seconds to go, and it uh, looks like Woody wants some more points on the board. He calls another timeout just inside the 45-yard line. Buckeyes call timeout, and it is first down and 10 for Ohio State. They have a 36 to nothing lead. Paul Campbell running into the backfield again for Ohio State. Doug Mackey has played a lot today. Lang has been the center. Andrea and Fritz at the guards. Ward and Mackey have been the tackles, and they alternate quite a bit at the tight ends. Now, Herman Jones is in there. So is Harrell. Doug Donnelly is also in there, and he's out wide on the left. So watch out for this one. He's a burner. At the 45-yard line of the Boilermakers. First down, 10, Ohio State. Gerald going back to throw. He fires it on the left side, and Jimmy Harrell does not catch it. He went diving backward for the ball, but again, I think the wind might have been a factor as he 
caught the ball after it hit the ground, and it is second and ten Buckeyes at the 45-yard line of the Boilermakers. We have 16 seconds to go in the first half, and we haven't had any update on that uh, Michigan State over Michigan 7-0 score since uh, since a little while ago, so we'll just leave you with that. Michigan State is beating Michigan 7 to nothing. Last word we had. Next week, we'll be at Iowa to bring you that one. Minnesota's playing at Iowa today. Second down, 10. Gerald back to throw. Oh. Running with it now. No, he's going to throw it. Long pass, Jimmy Harrell at the 10. Steps out of bounds at the 9. He went back. He pumped. He did not throw. He started to run. He still had room. Then he fired down on the left side, and Harrell caught it and jumped out of bounds at the 9 to stop the clock with 7 seconds left. Jerome King made the tackle. So at the 9, it is first and goal. A 33-yard pickup for the Buckeyes. Uh, Ken, I was uh, kind of watching out of the corner of my eye uh, Jimmy Harrell down there. Who made that block that uh, kept Springs free, was that, or kept uh, uh, Rod free? Was that Springs? Did Springs throw that block? I believe so. Now we will have the uh, field goal try from the 16, a 26-yard effort by Yonikievsky. And the kick is good. 39 to nothing. So, Plotty Yonikievsky comes through. And they're really doing uh, everything out here this afternoon. This quarter has been brought to you by Motorist Insurance Companies. Remember, life, auto, home, or business, Motorist Insurance serves you. So, Ohio State, once again, will be kicking off. Tom Orris getting ready to do the booting with three seconds showing on the clock. He will put the ball down. Big crowd, a lot of raincoats, very colorful uh, ensembles out here this afternoon watching the Buckeyes and the Boilermakers go to it. It had been anticipated we were going to have a, a battle. It has not been. Ohio State has dominated. Here's an onside kick coming up short, fallen on at the 27-yard line by John Macon of Purdue. And, of course, you know, all over, the cries are going to be coming up and pouring it on. And, uh, and I'm sure that that is not the intent this afternoon. And uh, the reason being is that I'm sure that Woody just wants to make sure that, that his people get some work, that they get an opportunity to do things that they uh, do not have an opportunity to do in a practice session. Like as soon as he got a few points on the board, he went back to his, uh, went back to his option, went back to his veer. At the 27-yard line, Purdue time for one play. Mark Herman, the quarterback, on the draw to Mike Brown, over right tackle to the 31, 32-yard line. Cousinaw there to make the stop, and the teams will go off now at halftime as they head for their respect locker rooms. The end of the first half at Ohio Stadium, the score 39 to nothing. Ohio State over Purdue. Purdue in the first half, believe it or not, had the ball for 50 plays to Ohio State's 26, and yet the score is 39 to nothing, Buckeyes. And Purdue, with the option, decides to kick off with the wind at their back in the second half. And the Buckeyes have Donley, Griffin, that's Ray, and Ron Springs back in the deep spots as Scott Sovereign, who set a field goal record of four last week against Wake Forest, kicks off. Left-footed kicker boots it, coming down into the end zone, and Ray Griffin about three yards back, hesitates, then comes out to the 5, the 10, and the 13-yard line where he's taken down. He looked for a moment like Ray was trying to make up his mind. He hesitated, then he took it out to the 13-yard line, and Bill Kay made the tackle there. So it's Ohio's ball, first down, 10 yards to go at their 13. Offensively, Mark Lang at center, Ernie Andrea and Ken Fritz the guards, Chris Ward and Doug Mackey the tackles, Bill Jaco is in at tight end with Jimmy Moore, although at the moment we see that, yes, it is the two tight end as Jimmy Harrell had started in and he comes out of there. They have Gerald at quarterback and they have Campbell in front of Springs and they have Donnelly out wide right. And the handoff goes to Paul Campbell, over right tackle, 
He goes out to the 18-yard line on a five-yard gain, and Fred Arrington makes the tackle for Purdue. So it's second down and five to go Buckeyes at their 18. For the Boilermakers defensively, it's Larkins, Jackson, Seneca, and Turner up front. Louie, the captain, the middle guard. Arrington and Motts, the linebackers. Jerome King and Pat Harris at the corners. Paul Beery and Willie Harris, the safety men. I formation with Campbell and Springs in behind. And Gerald handing off Campbell over left tackle out to the 24-yard line. A pickup of six yards on the play. Fred Arrington, the senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, on the tackle. That will be enough for the first down at the 24-yard line for the Buckeyes. So Ohio State here in the uh, third period starting off just... Uh, Punching that ball into the line. Herman Jones out and Jimmy Harrell running in with the play. Harrell coming out as a flanker to the right. Gerald again with Campbell and Springs behind him. Springs a sensational first half. Gerald ready. Quarterback takes it from Lang. Optioning left, handing off, and again running up the middle. Off the left side a little bit is Paul Campbell. Jackson and Rui make the tackle, but Campbell takes it out to the 31-yard line, so he digs out seven more yards, and it is second down and three. Campbell, a tough runner out of Ravenna, Ohio, 6'1", 212 pounds, and Joel Payton, the freshman, who looked so good in the first half and is not in there yet in the second half. We use him in the robust. He weighs 222. He's from Mentor. Second down three at the 31-yard line. Gerald pitching to Springs over left tackle and on to the 33-yard line. And Calvin Clark, a 220-pound freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, makes the tackle. And that will make it third down and one for Ohio State. That pitch out to... Just go ahead, Ken. I was just going to say that pitch out they just made to right to uh, Springs there was the one that he broke for 67 yards in the uh, in the second period. Exact play. And now they have Peyton in there. They go to the robust tee. So it is Harold and Springs with Peyton in the middle. Seven-man front up against them. And there goes Peyton, and he's going to get it. He's out to the 38-yard line before they can take him down. And it takes... Several people led by Fred Arrington to get the job done. That'll be a first down at the 38 as he grinds away for five. The Buckeyes, from their 13 and six plays, have come out to the 38-yard line as they here in the third quarter with a 39-0 lead are just uh, moving it so far on the ground. Herman Jones out wide to the right. Quarterback Rod Gerald in the I formation. Campbell and Springs in back of him. He's into the long count. And a Campbell gets it. Off left guard. Across the 40. Onto the 41. Roger Rui, the middle guard from Cincinnati. The captain, one of them, for Purdue. Making the tackle at the 41-yard line. He got three, second and seven. It's beginning to look like uh, back in the days of, uh, of Pete Johnson and Champ Henson when they were doing the... Uh, the power work right up the middle when they were doing their alternating, what with Campbell and Peyton. Doug Donnelly is out wide on the right from Cambridge, Ohio. Gerald optioning left, and it is Springs coming up to the 45-yard line, and he leaps over a tackler, and they will spot the ball up around the 48-yard line. See if... Uh, they're going to go for it again or whether they'll have to measure here. It's a little squirrel running down in the end zone. And that's the noise. There he goes. Yeah, he's going. He scored. 87,000 people and a squirrel. Yeah, that's right. And he just, uh, that's got to be the thrill of his life. My goodness. Not a tree in sight. <laughs> Third down and one at the 48-yard line of the Buckeyes. And uh, now, apparently, they do they have a timeout? They're going to, well, they're going to measure is what they're going to do. Campbell has carried the ball 11 times, 67 yards. Harrell goes in. Doug Donnelly comes to the sideline. And uh, Chris Ward and Rod Gerald are indicating how much they need. And it is about a yard that they've got to get for the first down. 
Willie Harris, one of the safety men, was hurt on that last play. He's going out of there for Rick Moss. He replaces him. And also Dean Bordigiani from Las Vegas, Nevada, goes in as an extra linebacker in this situation. They've got an extra man on the field, Purdue, and now they have to get him off of there as Bordigiani came in, and uh, Rui didn't get out. Now Rui is starting to come in, and Purdue has to call a timeout to uh, regroup. The score, Ohio State 39, Purdue nothing. Action will continue in 30 seconds. Willie Harris, who was injured for Purdue, is okay, but he is on the sideline as they have the extra man up there in the middle. Ron Springs now has carried seven times for 122 yards this afternoon for Ohio State. Time is still out on the field. It is third and one Buckeyes at their 48. Almost feels like a TV game here the last three or four minutes. Had nothing but timeouts. And the Buckeyes have had the ball all of this third quarter, which is a matter of eight plays. And they've used up four minutes and three seconds of the clock. Robust T, Peyton in the middle. Peyton gets the ball. He goes to the 50-yard line. That should be the first down. Joel Peyton cracks over left tackle, and Fred Arrington takes him down. It's spotted at the 49-yard line of Purdue. First down, 10 yards to go for the Buckeyes. And Peyton again coming to the sideline man who appears to have quite a future for Ohio State. Jimmy Harrell coming out wide to the right. They started this drive back on their 13-yard line. And it is Gerald optioning. He flips it back to Springs to the 45, 40, 35, 30, and on down to the 25-yard line. 24-yard run to the 25-yard line by Springs, and he's rolling up the yards today. Pat Harris finally got him. As on the option right, Gerald beyond the line of scrimmage flipped it back and Ron Springs turned the corner. And it is first and ten, Ohio State at the Purdue 25. He strung that out over to the uh, to the right side as absolutely long as he possibly could before flipping it off to uh, uh, Ron Springs. Gerald is getting very adept at that. At the 25-yard line of the Boilermakers, first and ten. Again, the eye. Again, Gerald optioning it. He gives it off to Campbell. Over left tackle. And Paul Campbell goes inside the 20. On into the 16-yard line. A gain of nine. Kevin Mutz, a sophomore from South Bend, Indiana, making the tackle for Purdue. So at the 16, it will be second down and a yard to get. And again, Doug Donnelly is going in. And Herman Jones comes to the sideline. And once more, they send in an extra middleman and Dean Bordigiani, a freshman from Las Vegas. Second down, one. Eye formation. Gerald options. Keeps the ball and uh, running over the left side and to the outside. Goes in for a first down. Rod Gerald is uh, finally spun down by Rick Moss at the 11-yard line. So there, it is first down and 10 yards to go. Ohio State started on their own 13. They have now had it for 12 plays. They have used up five and a half minutes. This is the fifth first down in this drive. And here comes Springs over left tackle again. And he goes inside the 10. Bordigiani hits him. And he gets on forward progress. Let's see, to the nine-yard line. It will be second down and eight to go at the nine for Ohio State. An authoritative drive opening up this third quarter. They have now used up exactly six minutes and have not given up the ball, starting back at their own 13-yard line. Donnelly coming out wide right. They have kept it on the ground. Campbell and Spring are set in behind. The call to Campbell, and he goes pouring it on into about the two-yard line. Campbell almost caught at the line of scrimmage, but uh, on a great effort of his own, he takes it in about two yards away. And that will make it third down and a yard to go at the two-and-a-half-yard line for Ohio State. And Joel Payton is going back into the lineup. Bear in mind, he has three touchdowns this afternoon. The school record is five, held by Pete Johnson. 
And it is the robust tee, and Peyton is the man in the middle between Harrell and Springs. Third down and a yard to get for a first down, and it is Peyton into left guard, and uh, they'll probably have to measure here to see whether or not he pulled out the first down. The officials are calling time on themselves. Jeff Seneca, a sophomore tackle, was in there with linebacker Mike Bergamy for Purdue. And the officials look it over now. To, they're going to measure. Uh, the officials having a timeout now, and it looks like they need just a matter of inches to go for the first down. They're going to measure it again at the hash marks. And uh, they need a matter of an inch or so, and it is fourth down and one. That's for a first down and about a yard for a touchdown. Fourth down, and here it is, and it is Peyton for the touchdown. Joel Peyton caps off a drive of 15 plays. 88 yards. That is a classic Ohio State kind of a drive. They have used up over half of this first period. There is 7.50 left to play, and they have not given up the football. Janikiewski in for the point after. Harold will be holding. And the kick is good. Ohio State leads 46 to nothing. Action continues in 30 seconds. Well, that was some drive. 87 yards uh, it was in 15 plays. Dwight Hudson, the Ohio State drum major, has just uh, dropped by to visit here in the booth, and I'm sure he's got to be mighty happy today. The Buckeyes out in front here, 46 to nothing. Boris kicking off. Moss and Leverett are the deep backs for Purdue. From the close to the open end of the stadium, the kick goes down, and at the 5, it is Moss. He comes straight to the 10, to the 15, the 20, and is down uh, just over the 20-yard line by Tom Blinko, who did a fine job in place of Tom Cousinow the past couple of weeks. The ball is put down at the 21-yard line, and it's first down and 10 for Purdue. They have it for the first time in the second half. Pete Quinn is the center. John Finucan from Cleveland, Ohio, a captain on this team at left guard. Steve McKenzie at right. Mike Barberich and John Lefebvre, the tackles. Reggie Arnold and Dave Young, the ends. Smith, the flankers. Skabinski and Brown are in behind. And here is Brown over right tackle, going to the outside and running it out to the 25-yard line. A gain of four yards. And Joe Allegro makes the tackle for the Buckeyes. It will be second down and six to go for the first. Now let's check out the Ohio State defensive unit for you. Ross and Dantzler at the ends. Cato and Doolin are playing at the tackles. Terry Bach is in there at middle guard. Atkins and Cousinow, the backers. Guess, Mills, Allegro, and Griffin are the deep men. Second down and six to go. Herman back to throw. Fires it up the middle. Hits at the 40-yard line. It is caught there by Ray Smith. Across the 45, up over the 50. And he is taken down at the Ohio State 48. And Ray Griffin was the man who got him. He had turned and started back. And he takes it to the 48-yard line. That's a 28-yard gain. And they're in Ohio State territory. So Reggie Arnold, who has caught 20 this year, makes a catch here in this third quarter at the 48 first and 10. Well, if you give uh, Mark Herman a little time to pass and a little protection uh, with the wind that he's back there, that shows that he is capable of throwing those good patterns. He hands off this time and running straight into the middle is John Skabinski for short yardage. The 223-pound tailback goes from the 48, three yards to the 45, and Byron Cato and Tom Cousinow make the tackle for the Buckeyes. Second down and seven, Purdue. Woody Hayes going to the bench as uh, middle guard, replacing Aaron Brown as Terry Bach out of Centerville, the first team All-Ohio selection and uh, named to the Scholastic All-America squad, Terry Bach. Now it's uh, regular tee, and back goes Herman, dropping straight back and firing and hitting. Up on the left side, no, it's incomplete. Tim Eubank did not hold on long enough at the 32-yard line. He was hit by Paul Ross, and... Uh, he did not contain the ball long enough, in the opinion of the official. Third down seven at the 45-yard line of Ohio State. 
They lead 46 to nothing in the third quarter. Going out wide right is Reggie Arnold, and to the left comes Ray Smith, the sophomore from Paris, Kentucky, the hometown of Blanton Collier. Now back he goes on a screen. He throws it to Skabinski on the left. He's up to the 42-yard line of the Buckeyes, and there he is set backward. Dave Atkins was the man who made the tackle, and we'll see where they marked the forward progress. Skabinski on a screen left, taking it into the 41-yard line. That's where they'll put it down, and that will make it fourth down, three to go, and Purdue has a punting situation and will call on Dave Egan. Egan is standing back at his 44-yard line, and Ray Griffin is going back around his 10. Five punts, one of them blocked, an average of 33 yards. Egan gets it in the air high, and it bounces on the nine-yard line and is touched down by a Purdue player at the two. It is 46-0 Buckeyes. Action continues in 30 seconds. A 39-yard kick was down by Rock Supan at the Ohio State 2, so the Buckeyes will be working from there. First and 10 in the I formation, and Peyton now is the uh, front man in the I formation, and it is Peyton over left tackle from the 2 out to the 5-yard line as the freshman is tackled by Roger Rui. And at the 5, it will be second down and 7, and here come a whole bunch of new people in there for the Buckeyes including uh, Gerald, the first unit, really. They just had... Uh, had well, what's uh, happening now is he's... Uh, uh, we just got word from the bench he's down to his third team. Well, he just sent Gerald uh, back into the action. He went down to the third team for that one play. Not, okay, you're right. Now right. he's got the first one in. And he's gone to the robust tee. And Gerald options right, and here comes Springs up to the 7 and thrown down at the 10 by Willie Harris, the safety man, back in action. And the ball is out to the 10-yard line. That'll make it third down and two yards to go for Ohio State as we see Doug Mackey going into the lineup. If it sounded like we were hesitating between which team was going in and which team was going out, I have Dave Purdy piped into my right ear, and I have you in my left ear, and Purdy's saying, well, he's got the third team going in. Now, wait a minute. So now everybody's going in, and he didn't know where they were, what was going on. Well, at first play, of course, they had uh, a bunch of uh, strangers in there for the moment, at least. They may get very familiar before the afternoon is over. Running the ball, going over left tackle is Joel Payton, and he goes to the 15-yard line, which is enough for a first down. A power runner, and yet with speed. Calvin Clark and Dean Bordigiani making the tackle at the 15-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for Ohio State. Just got word from uh, Dave Purdy mentioned probably once they cross the 20-yard line, you'll see maybe the second team back in or the third team, whichever. Jimmy Harrell coming out wide right. And the handoff goes again to Joel Payton. Again over left tackle. Not much of an opening, but he fights his way from the 15-yard line up to the 17. And here comes uh, a lot of people into the lineup now as... Uh, We'll see a bunch of changes, and we'll pause right now, 10 seconds for station identification. All the scores of all the games, plus highlights from the Michigan-Michigan State game on SportsWatch, immediately following the game on WTVN Columbus, 610. Well, we have Castagnola at quarterback. Peyton is in there, and it is Castagnola optioning left. Ricky Johnson gets it, swing left end, flag down at the 20-yard line as Johnson is tackled by Pat Harris. They run a lot of substitutions into that uh, lineup just now. And uh, Tom Waugh is one of them. Tom is in there playing at the right guard. He's a junior from uh, Norwalk, Ohio. There was a penalty flag down. The ball at the 20-yard line after Johnson went out of bounds. Greg Stora has just gone in. Jimmy Moore is coming out for Ohio State. Now the ball is being moved up to the 22. So it is a penalty offside against Purdue from the 17 to the 22-yard line. That will make it second down and three. Second and three at the 22. Peyton and Johnson in behind the quarterback, Castignola. Peyton gets the ball, goes up the middle to the 25-yard line, and uh, maybe had the first down, we'll have to see. He did, he got it at the 25, the tacklers, Fred Arrington and Roger Rui. 
First and ten. If there was ever a day when a player has come into his own, I would have to say today would be uh, uh, Peyton, Joel Payton's day. He's already in with one, two, three, four touchdowns. He needs one more to tie the school record set by Pete Johnson. And we still have 317 to go in only the third period. 25-yard line, first down and 10. Doug Donnelly out wide right. And here comes Johnson up the middle and then slicing to the left a little bit. Coming out to the 29 on a gain of four yards. And Calvin Clark, a freshman who's looked very good for Purdue today as a defensive tackle, makes the stop at the 29. And it will be second down and six to go. And uh, a Purdue player is hurt. The score is 46 to nothing. Buckeyes in front and action continues in 30 seconds. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Here's a pitch right, and it is Ricky Johnson running the ball from the 29 across the 30 onto the 33-yard line to be taken down there. It'll be third down. The man who was injured was Kena Turner, and Reuben Floyd has replaced him. Marcus Jackson just made the tackle. The ball at the 33-yard line, and therefore it is third down and about three to go for the first down. Ohio State football coming to you in Canton over WHBC and in Wellston over WKOV, part of the Ohio State Network. 49 strong this year. Glad to have you Buckeye fans along with us. Now we see Ricardo Volley into the lineup. Uh, we also have Mike Schneider in. And the handoff goes straight up the middle. Running with the ball is Joel Payton to the 35-yard line on the handoff from Castagnola. So he got a couple of yards on that play. And at the 35-yard line, it is fourth down and inches, and McKee will go in to kick. We have a minute and 45 seconds left to play in this third quarter of action, and McKee has had to punt just once, 33 yards. Well, they're going. Uh, they're going to punt now, and uh, got a few boos when he came out. Uh, wanted uh, Coach Hayes to go for it, but I would assume that that uh, Coach Hayes would prefer not to pour it on. Of course, the score is 46 zip. However, at the 20 is McKee. Harris and Beery are back deep for Purdue. Here's a wobbly kick taken at the 36-yard line by Harris, and he is knifed down immediately by Ricardo Volley back inside his 36. Volley just came right down and uh, grabbed him by the ankles and spun him down. Ball is being put down at the 33-yard line, and Purdue has had the play for had the ball for six plays in this period with the wind at their back. First and 10 at their own 33-yard line. That was a 29-yard kick into the wind by McKee. Now Herman back to throw. And he throws up on the right side. Penalty marker down. Lenny Mills was out covering Reggie Arnold. And I think they may have called interference on Lenny, although it looked to me like he accidentally got in his way. That was the same pattern that they got a long gainer on in the second period where uh, Herman drops back, looks to the left, does that old pump fake to the right, and then the uh, receiver breaks behind uh, Lenny Mills in this case, but Mills, I think, just kind of hung on to him for a step. Okay, the ball is spotted at the 44-yard line of Purdue, and it is first down and 10 there for the Boilermakers. A minute and eight seconds left, third quarter. Mark Herman, the freshman quarterback, 6'5", takes it, fades back to throw. He's got a little time. He's running right, still looking, and firing up the middle into a crowd, and it is caught at the Buckeye 40 by Ray Smith, his flanker. And uh, down he goes at the 40-yard line, making the tackle. Ray Griffin for Ohio State. Speaking of Griffins, Keith Griffin had a big day or night last night for Eastmore. Scored twice, a sophomore in high school. 16-yard pickup at the 40-yard line, first down 10. Handing off is Herman. Running with it, Skabinski gets a couple of yards from the 40 to the 38-yard line where it will be second down and eight to go. Terry Bach is in on the tackle. And uh, we have now about 25 seconds left to play in the third quarter as the Boilermakers huddle. Next week, Bob Connors and I will be uh, at Iowa in the following week at Northwestern. Here they come with Herman fading back to throw. 
looking, firing, hitting at the 21-yard line. Ray Smith is downed immediately by Mike Guess in at the 21. Fine throw, and that uh, leaves four seconds left on the clock. 17-yard pickup on the play. First down at the 21-yard line of Ohio State. And that's it, the end of the third quarter. And the score is 46 to nothing. Ohio State is in front. This is the Ohio State Football Network. This quarter. 46 to nothing is the score. We're back at uh, Ohio Stadium with more play-by-play. -play. Here's Ken. And Mike Herman, Mark Herman, back to throw, looking, being rushed. He fires it downfield. It is almost intercepted in at the seven-yard line. Very nearly intercepted by Atkins. And uh, it was on the 21, first down and 10 yards in, to go in Ohio State territory. And so it is second down and 10. This drive started back at the Purdue 33, and in five plays they've moved it to the Buckeye 21-yard line. Atkins very nearly intercepting that ball. Herman has hit on 11 of 19 for 118 yards here this afternoon. This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Call your nearest Capital Financial Services office to find out more about getting your loan application started immediately. Skabinski gets the handoff on the draw play, comes up the middle, and goes from the 22 forward to the 20. And Jim Laughlin and Joe Allegro make the tackle for Ohio State. So it will be third down and eight to go for Purdue at the Ohio State 20-yard line here in this fourth period with Purdue going from the close to the open end of the stadium. If you've never been here, that's from our left to our right as we look down. Now they have Ray Smith flanking out on the right. Splitting left is Reggie Arnold. The two uh, running backs are set in behind, and back goes Herman to throw it. And he's going to be hit from behind, and he throws a wobbly pass. The man who was there behind him was Joe Hornick. And he got to him very nicely, and the pass went awry as Hornick was there on the coverage from North Olmsted. So at the 20, it is now fourth down and eight yards to go for Purdue. Ken, on our coaches' uh, show following today's game, our guests will be Gary Tranquil and Mickey Jackson. Of course, Gary Tranquil, the defensive backfield coach, and Mickey Jackson in charge of the running backs. We Let's had uh, Tranquil up here the last time they shut out a team. Uh, he must like to come up after shutouts. Here is Herman back to throw on fourth down, and it is incomplete in at the 13-yard line. Joe Allegro covering the tight end, Dave Young, who had come to the outside. And so the drive of the Boilermakers, starting on their own 33, is stopped at the Ohio State 20, and the Buckeyes will take it over. First down and 10 yards to go on their own 20-yard line. And Greg Castagnola is in there at quarterback. Bill Jaco is going in as one of the uh, tight ends. Greg Stora is the other one. Now it looks like uh, Springs is the front back. Ricardo Volley behind him. Castagnola hands it off and running with the ball and uh, cutting out to the 25 and across it to the 28-yard line is Mike Schneider. Schneider tackled at the 29 by Willie Harris and Rock Supan. It'll be second down and one. So we have uh, Mike Schneider in there now in the backfield along with Ricardo Volley. And this one goes to Volley and he comes over the left tackle and he's running hard with it. Gets out to the 34. He lost it for a moment but managed to hang on as he was hit hard by Mike Bergamy, one of the linebackers. And that'll be a first down up at the 34-yard line. OSU is in with 405 yards. Total offense produced 229 yards. Let's call it the 35 as they spot the ball closer to it than the 34. First down and 10 for Ohio State. Castagnola, the quarterback. And Greg uh, starts running right, handing the ball off to Mike Schneider. Schneider coming up a couple of yards from the 35. Forward progress to the 38. Kevin Motts and Mike Bergamy making the tackle for Purdue. And it is second down and seven as Jimmy Moore comes running in uh, from the sideline as one of the tight ends and Bill Jaco comes out of there. Mike Schneider, one of those big size fullback that Coach Hayes traditionally has gone for. He's 6'2", 206 pounds, sophomore out of Cincinnati. Mike Schneider. 
Here we are now with Castagnola going to throw it. He fires and hits. It is Donnelly at the Purdue 46-yard line. Fine catch by Doug Donnelly, who is angling across the middle. So that combination hits again. And it is put down at the 45-yard line of the Boilermakers. Nick Jones made the tackle. That's a 17-yard gain and a first down. Doug Donnelly, 6'1", 180 pounds, out of Cambridge. Consensus All-Ohio running back as a senior. He had 15 touchdowns over there. And he is quick at the 45 of the Boilermakers, first and 10. Castagnola again rolling left and handing off. And Mike Schneider has it going from the 45, four yards to the 41. Sniping off tackle on the left side with Mike Bergamy again on the stop. And that will make it second down and six for Ohio State. Buckeyes lead it 46 to nothing on an overcast, mild afternoon. It has not rained since the game started. It was raining here during the morning. The weather has not really been much of a factor. A little bit of wind going into the uh, north, south to the north. Castagnola running right, keeps the ball, and is hit at the line of scrimmage, taken down by Hugh Benson from Evanston, Illinois. Now in there at defensive end, for Jim Young's Purdue team. It will be third and six at the 41-yard line. This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages of your phone book for the office nearest you. Charles Hunter has just gone in as a tight end. Well, he's a wide receiver. He's coming out wide to the left. Hunter on the left side. Castagnola takes the ball, fakes, goes back to throw. His hit shakes a tackler, still looking to throw. Over to Volley at the 45, and Volley is taken down at the 43. Good defensive play by Reuben Floyd, who had pursuit. He's from Canton, Ohio, and the junior made the tackle. As he hadn't, uh, Volley might still be running. So at the 43-yard line, we have a fourth and eight situation for Ohio State. And uh, Dave McKee, who has not had a very busy afternoon, he's punted twice for an average of 31.5, comes in there to do the kicking now, standing back at his 43-yard line. And Pat Harris and Paul Beery are back deep. Harris the deeper of the two. And here's the kick going high in the air, taken at the 11-yard line by Harris, running to his left to the 15, up to the 20, and he glides across to the 22. The score, 46-0. Ohio State action continues after this from Capital Financial Services. Joe Metallic has gone in at quarterback and on the first offensive play, hands off, and Mike Brown comes out from the 21 to the 25-yard line, and Jim Laughlin and Gary Doolin make the tackle for Ohio State. So it will be second down and six. That was a 32-yard kick for the Buckeyes' Dave McKee. At the 25, Metallic, who is a senior from Indianapolis, in there at quarterback now as Herman is out of the action. Metallic back to throw, pitching to Mike Brown, takes it at the 28, comes across the 30 to the 31-yard line. And there he is tackled. And in there for the Buckeyes on the play, Tom Roach. And he got some help from Alvin Washington, who is in there in the deep secondary. Now, uh, Terry Vogler is in there defensively for the Buckeyes. Number 97 as a linebacker. Duncan Griffin is out there at a corner spot. It is first down and 10 at the 32-yard line for the Boilermakers. As Metallic hands off and Mike Brown spins over right tackle and gets short yardage up to the 34-yard line. And Alvin Washington is there to take him down. Second down and eight at the 34-yard line of Purdue. As Eubank and Young continue to alternate bringing in the plays. With well, the kind of strength and the kind of maturity and the kind of growth that we got out of that heartbreaking loss to Oklahoma, uh, and you couple that kind of experience plus the playing time that these youngsters are getting now, and uh, this team is just going to get stronger and better. They have shown a great deal today. Metallic back to throw, being rushed hard, throws it into a crowd at the line of scrimmage. It is incomplete. I'm not sure who he was trying to hit, but uh, he hit McKenzie, his offensive right guard in the back. Tremendous rush from the right side by Tyrone Harris. 
Third down and eight for Purdue at their own 34-yard line. Getting to, getting to see an awful lot of youngsters in here now. A lot of names that uh, were highly recruited and got a lot of ink a year or two ago, but now coming into their own today. Now Metallic hands off, and Brown runs over left tackle and runs it out to the 38-yard line. So he picks up four, and it'll be fourth down and four. So the book on Herman, who probably will not come back, although you never know, he was 11 of 19 for 118 yards today. Luther Hansen made the tackle on that last play. Now we'll have a punt by Egan, standing back at his 23-yard line. Here is the snap, and uh, he boots it from about his 30. Brian Schwartz is the deep man. It hits on the Buckeye 40 and is going to be dead on the 26-yard line. 46 to nothing, Buckeyes. Action continues after this from Capital Financial Services. Ricardo Bali takes a handoff from Castagnola. Goes over right tackle and runs it from the 26 to the 31 for a gain of five yards. Mike Bergamy on the tackle, and it is second down and five. That was a 36-yard punt by Egan a moment ago. Now the Buckeyes uh, make another change. Doug Donnelly goes into the lineup, and Charles Hunter comes out. Wide receiver is out to the right side. Castagnola pitching, and Volley coming over the left side to the outside, up to the 35-yard line where he is knocked out of bounds. So that's going to make it third and one as Dean Bordagiani makes the tackle at the 35 of the Buckeyes. 46 to nothing is the score. Ohio State in front. And the attendance here today, the 54th consecutive sellout, 87,707. They have seen quite a display. They go to the robust backfield now with Volley, Payton, Carroll. The ball goes over to Payton. He comes off the left tackle and is out to the 38-yard line. He gets the first down. Every time he's been called on to do it, he's done it. Kevin Watts making the tackle. First and 10, Buckeyes at their 38. As the clock moves along and we have now seven minutes left. Hunter goes wide to the right. Castagnola into his count. Quarterback hands off and running with it, Ricardo Volley from Lynchburg, Virginia, sophomore. Up across the 38-yard line to the 42, Jeff Seneca. Making the tackle on the gain of four, it will be second down and six for Ohio State. This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages of your phone book for the office nearest you. Now Doug Donnelly back in, goes wide right. Seven-man front. It is volley over right tackle to the 45-yard line. A pickup of three yards on the play, and Seneca and Bergamy make the tackle. And that's going to make it third down. Coming up and three to go at the 45. Ohio State leading 46 to nothing. A very convincing effort here against a team that a lot of people were, from the Ohio point of view, are a little bit afraid of coming in. They knew that they had quite a passing attack, a team that gave Notre Dame quite a battle. They've had a couple of convincing victories. Third down three. And Castagnola hands it off and running with the ball. Mike Schneider over left tackle from the 45-yard line to the 47-yard line. And that will make it uh, about fourth and one. They just uh, keep cracking in between the guards and the tackles. The straightaway stuff right now. Dave McKee is going into punt. Figures we have... Uh Peyton, 60 yards, 17 carries. Paul Campbell, 83 yards, 13 carries. Ron Springs with 153 yards, 10 carries. McKee has punted three times, an average of 32 yards, 33, 29, and 32. And here's a boot that uh, is going to help his average some. It bounces on the 10, goes on down to the 5, is fallen on at the 5-yard line by a Buckeye, Calvin Murray. So... That's a 48-yard kick. 
We're getting all these new faces, and uh, some of these fellows coming into the uh, uh, being recruited by Ohio State have an awful lot of uh, big credits going for them. Uh, for example, Hunter, the gentleman that was in uh, uh, the tight end and or wide receiver, uh, he has uh, uh, the distinction of being the only three-time All-American, All-State in the state of Delaware. Is out of Newark, Delaware. Our score is 46 nothing. Ohio State over Purdue. Action will continue after this from Capital Financial Service. The ball is on the five-yard line, and it'll be first and ten for the Purdue Boilermakers. The Buckeyes leading 46 nothing, with just under five minutes to go. 4:56 exactly. Sell out today. Uh, the for the uh, 54th consecutive sellout. And next week, all the action will come to you from Iowa. Ken and I will be out along with the entire crew for the uh, Ohio State Hawkeye game. And with more play-by-play -play, again, Ken Coleman. And Joe Metallic at quarterback. The ball is at the five-yard line, first down and ten. Running with it over the right side is Benny Leverett of Bartow, Florida. And from the five... He gets it out. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like about the 10, and Alvin Washington makes the tackle. At the end of the first period, Minnesota and Iowa, no score. End of the first period, Northwestern leading Indiana, 3-0. And in the first period, it is Wisconsin over Illinois, 3-0. Wisconsin ranked 19th nationally, and you said they were, what, after their fifth win today? That's right. It is the... Uh... Their try for five. Second down and five here at the 10-yard line. Metallic handing it off and running with the ball is Tim Boykin. He's from Kent, Ohio, one of the captains on this team. And he runs it out across the 10 to the 11-yard line. So that's a first down for Purdue. Alvin Washington and Joe Hornick on the tackle. Hornick and Laughlin are playing at the end positions for the Buckeyes. And just uh, at random, uh, pointing out some of the people who are in, Ray Ellis is playing at the left corner right now. One of the safeties is Schwartz. Vincent Skillings is playing the other corner for Ohio State. Metallic handing off, running with the ball, John Macon, over right tackle. And uh, he runs it across to the 16-yard line, and Nicholas Miller makes the tackle for Ohio State. So there is a loss on that play. It is second down and about 10 yards to go. In the Michigan-Michigan State game in the third period, Michigan is leading Michigan State 24-7. to The ball is at the 16-yard line, second and 10. And Metallic is rolling left, and he's going to try to maybe throw it. No, he's going to run, and he's sent out of bounds up at the 19-yard line. On the far side of the field, Tyrone Harris and Jim Laughlin making the tackle for Ohio State. John Epitropolis goes into the lineup now for the Buckeyes, number 33. Tyrone Harris uh, out of uh, Columbus Mifflin. Keith Saunders is in there now. So it is third down coming up and seven yards to go. When these youngsters get in, we try to point them all out to you because, uh, well, they don't get that much chance. We like to give them the credit if we can. Here's the pass that is incomplete, aiming for Benny Leverett from Joe Metallic up around the 28-yard line. Epitropolis on the coverage for the Buckeyes. So we'll have a putting situation with 2.56 left. This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages of your phone book for the office nearest you. Dave Egan is in to do the kicking for Purdue. And back deep is Keith Saunders at midfield. Here's a low line drive kick. It hits across the 50. It's going over inside the 40, rolling along to the 30 five-yard line of the Buckeyes. So it goes over to Ohio State at their 35, first and 10. Mike Strahine was uh, on the coverage that time. Check it. He has just gone in. That was a 45-yard punt. 
Strahin is the quarterback. At the 35, first down 10, Strahin the quarterback, flips it out, and here running around to the left side is Calvin Murray, up to the 40, onto the 42. He started to run right and then inexplicably turned around, started going left and uh, took it out to the 42-yard line from the 35 where Reuben Floyd made the tackle. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Actor, writer, singer, Paul Williams, in an hour-long special this evening at 7.15 on WTVN Radio Columbus, 6.10. At the 42 of the Buckeyes, second and three, Mike Strahine pitching, and Calvin Murray running again over the left side. And look at him battle. He went off left tackle, cut back to the inside, and ripped it out there to the 49-yard line on his own. He got a first down. Seven-yard pickup. Roger Williams made the tackle at the 49. And it is first and 10, Ohio State. Two minutes, uh, less than two minutes to play in this game now. The clock moving on. Again, they come out in the eye formation. And on the draw play, it is Murray again, and he's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and thrown for a loss. Jeff Seneca was the man who led the charge in there, a big 243-pound sophomore tackle. And uh, he lost a half a yard back at the 48. It is second down and almost 11 to go for the first. Calvin Murray's out of Woodbine, New Jersey. Consensus All-State All-American selection there at Millville High School. Woodbine, 5'11", 185 pounds. Doug Pauley now is in there, and he goes out wide right. And the quarterback, Strahine, handing off and running up the middle with the ball is Felix Lee, who has just gone into the game. And he goes over to the 46-yard line of Purdue where Calvin Clark makes the tackle. So uh, the pickup is six, and it'll be third down and uh, about uh, five to go for the first down. The clock showing 41 seconds left to play in the game. Again, the Buckeyes coming out. And Strahine pitching and running over the right side is Murray. Sweeps to the outside, still on his feet. He is on down to about the 42-yard line before they get him. And that looks like another first down. Murray just kept dangling along the line of scrimmage and finally did swing the outside. And Nick Jones, a cornerback, Came up to take him, and his forward progress takes him to the 40-yard line, and there it is first down and 10 for Ohio State. This quarter has been brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Call your nearest Capital Financial Services office to find out more about getting your loan application started. Pauly coming out wide to the left at the 40-yard line of Purdue. It is first down and 10. Strahin handing the ball off and catapulting up the middle is Felix Lee. He goes inside the 35, and that's going to be all. The game is over, and the Ohio State Buckeyes have won it. The score, 46 to nothing.